Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video, we're going to compare the iPhone 5 with its predecessor, the iPhone 4S. Let's get to it. Okay, so lots to talk about here, and we're going to start with hardware. We're going to talk about specs, screen, speed of the device, how fast they are browsing the web, and also battery life. So, so let's talk about hardware first. As you can see, the iPhone 5 is simply taller than the iPhone 4S. In fact, if we stack them side to side and give you kind of a, a bottom view, you can see that they're exactly the same in terms of the width. Down here on the bottom, you can see that the old iPhone had a speaker here and a microphone here. On the iPhone 5, you get speaker here and the microphone here. Now, one thing I wondered was whether this speaker is louder than on the iPhone 4S, and I can say that it's slightly louder, but not by very much. You can also see that on the iPhone 5, the headphone port is now on the bottom. Very different backs on these two. We've got a glass panel here on the iPhone 4S, which as a lot of people know that have the iPhone 4 and 4S, shatters quite easily. And finally, they added sort of a metal aluminum backing, which does a great job at deterring fingerprints. It looks nice. But you still have glass here and here, and I, I can't help but wondering what happens if you drop the phone and these parts shatter. They're probably very difficult to swap out. Whereas on the iPhone 4S, a shattered back meant that you just took out these screws, slid in another cover, and you were good to go. Something else I want to point out back here is that the iPhone 5 has a sapphire crystal lens cover. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's much more difficult, if not impossible, to scratch the lens, which is very important. Uh, not too long ago, I cracked the back here, and I had to get a replacement. And when I swapped the old back, which included a glass lens cover, with the new back, the quality of my photos improved, because as I then discovered, my lens was scratched. And so that's a big problem. If you scratch your lens six months into owning an iPhone, your pictures are going to come out worse. So Apple got smart, and they, they put a much harder material here uh, on the lens cover. We also have a microphone here, which will help with audio coming from the back of the phone and make HD video a lot better. We've got the same resolution camera here, very similar camera system, but we've got some new software and some small tweaks to the iPhone 5 cameras to hopefully help in low light performance. And we're going to have comparisons on photo and video quality in the final review on pocketnow.com. Going over to the side here, we can see that the iPhone 5 is essentially how thick the iPhone 4S would be if you remove the top and the bottom uh, glass panels and you just had the metal band. It's essentially just a metal band. And Apple polished the edge of it to give it a really nice look. And as you can see here, the uh, micro SIM slot has gone to a nano SIM slot, and you can actually cut a micro SIM to a nano SIM shape in case you're wondering if you're on a prepaid plan or if you're getting an unlocked iPhone and you want to use your existing SIM card. You can do that if you just cut your micro SIM to a regular SIM. Up on the top, not much has changed here except there's no microphone here. There's a microphone somewhere else, and there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Over on the side, Again, not much has changed. On the iPhone 5, this is really a minor detail, the uh, silent toggle switch has moved up about a millimeter, just to kind of stretch out a little bit. And beyond that, we still have the bands, although these bands are now color specific to whether you have the black phone or the white phone. Obviously, they're white because this is the white iPhone 5. Now, let's talk about specs with both of these. We've got a dual core 800 megahertz or so processor on the Apple iPhone 4S. And on the Apple iPhone 5, we've got a 1 gigahertz dual core processor with a smaller manufacturing process, which means that it should be more power efficient and definitely it is smaller. And that's very important because Apple fit a lot of radios into this really small form factor, which actually feels, it's really hard to describe, it actually feels smaller than the iPhone 4S, even though it's taller. Now let's talk about other specs. The screen resolution has changed. 960 down by 640 across on the iPhone 4S. That was never a standard resolution. They didn't adhere to 720p or anything like that. Uh, and they didn't adhere to 720p with the iPhone 5. We've got a really weird uh, 1166 resolu or 1136 resolution. Again, a really weird number that's hard to remember by that same 640. So as we're going to see in a few minutes, 
there are apps that really don't work to the full screen size. So you get a lot of apps that kind of hover in the middle of the screen, which really isn't that big of a deal. And apps will be updated in the near future to take advantage of the higher screen res. Now, Apple claims that this screen is the best screen on the market that has better color saturation. Is that the truth? Well, let's see. So we're gonna unlock and both of these devices have nothing running as you can see. So we're gonna do some speed tests, but first a note on the quality of the screens. And in the unboxing, I showed you uh, the photos icon. So here it is on the iPhone 5 and then look at it on the iPhone 4S up here. As you can see, the yellows are a little bit more yellow, the green's a little bit more green, the blue's a little bit more blue. There's no question that the iPhone 5 has better color saturation uh, than the iPhone 4S. In fact, let's open up Google Images and we'll open up a high-res image and we'll compare something more real life side to side. By the way, what you're seeing now is a white screen. These are both on middle screen brightness and they're on automatic screen brightness, so technically they should be about the same brightness level. What I'm actually noticing is that the screen on the iPhone 5 is a little bit more gray. I'd say it's a little bit more warm uh, than the iPhone 4S. And that's kind of funny because the 4S was warmer than the iPhone 4, which was a very cold display. Okay, so we're going to bring up a common image here. Okay, so I just did a Google Images search for beach. I want to zoom in on the screens a little bit. And one thing that you can see with the iPhone 5 is that because the screen is larger, you get to see more on-screen elements. So whereas before on the iPhone 4S, you had to scroll down to see the pagination, now it's all in one frame. So let's click on the same image here, and maybe we'll get a high-res version, maybe not. We'll click full-size image here. Okay, that's good. So let's zoom in a little bit. And de definitely, the color temperature on the iPhone 5 is far warmer. In fact, look at the sand. It looks like actual sand. Over here, it kind of looks a little bit more white. Maybe this is a Caribbean scene where the sand is actually white. Uh, but it just seems like the color saturation is, is better. The sky here is kind of a turquoise-ish blue. Here, it's more of a deep blue. And let's go back and click on a different image. Let's go to this one with the palm tree. That's nice. Get some green in there. We're going to go into landscape on both of these so we get that full screen view. Interestingly, the iPhone 5 is really taking its time on this particular, particular image. We're going to do web browsing speed tests in a moment, but right there it kind of failed. So here's what it looks like. Uh, here's what a palm tree looks like. We can zoom in and see kind of the, the different details in the leaves. And again, very different color. Uh, saturation here, a lot darker here on the iPhone 5. Some might like, some may prefer the cooler temperature of the iPhone 4S, and some might like the warmer tone of the iPhone 5, which is probably a little bit more true to life. Okay, now let's see which of these devices is faster. Obviously, the iPhone 5 is going to be faster, but let's see to what degree. We're going to open up Facebook at the exact same time, which has actually it was faster on the 4S, which has been optimized, by the way, to fill the entire screen, unlike some of the other apps that you're going to see. Now, Apple has encouraged developers to take advantage of the taller screen by adding more stuff instead of just by making the screen longer. As you can see, Facebook didn't follow that, and they just sort of made the screen longer, which I guess works well in an app like that. Let's jump back to the home screen. Okay, let's launch the camera now. Okay, significantly faster on the iPhone 5. And you can see that Apple took better advantage of the screen space by making the shutter button kind of the same size as you would get here on the, um, the same size as the home button, which is interesting. A lot of people now are using the plus button, the camera plus button to take the photo, but it's nice that for those that like to use the on-screen controls, it's a little bit bigger in the iPhone 5. Okay, now let's test Siri. What's the weather going to be tomorrow? iPhone 4S is ahead. Don't forget your raincoat. Okay, the uh, iPhone 5 sprung ahead a little bit faster. Let's do something else with Siri. What's 4 times 3 divided by 3? This might answer your question. This might answer your question. Okay, so the iPhone 5 coming out slightly ahead, although interestingly, the iPhone 4S converted it faster, but the 5 answered the question just a little bit faster. So let's continue opening up stuff. So we're going to open up settings here. A little bit faster on the 5, but really barely. Let's open up a third-party app, New York Times app. We'll open up Newsstand. And by the way, folders. Open up slightly 
slightly faster on the iPhone 5, but they still haven't changed that, and that's kind of unfortunate. And Android folders open just so fast, it's awesome. In iOS, it's always been that little slowness. So we're gonna tap on New York Times here, have it open. This has been optimized for the full screen size. This opened a lot quicker uh, than the iPhone 4S. Okay, let's open speedtest.net. It's another third-party app. Hasn't been updated for the taller display, as you're gonna see in a sec. Well, identical. And as you can see, this is what happens in the iPhone 5 when it's not optimized. You get black bars. It's not that big of a deal. Some people say you should get the black iPhone because it's less apparent. I don't really notice the difference. I kind of wish that Apple had brought this to the bottom, though, so it's closer to the bottom of the phone, so when you're typing, it's more comfortable. Now let's do a Wi-Fi test. Over the same exact Wi-Fi network, we'll be kind of competing with each other. Okay, faster ping on the uh, on the 4S, faster download on the 4S, faster upload on the um, on the 5. So that was interesting, really inconclusive there. And finally, let's open a, another third-party app. Let's just open the Apple Store. You know, Apple should tell their own developers to optimize for the new iPhone 5s, because this is not yet, and it's up, the most up-to-date. Okay, now let's do the all-important web browsing speed test. We'll launch Safari, see which opens faster. About the same there, we're going to go into Favorites. Favorites opened about the same. We're going to go to Pocket now. And iPhone 5 got there a little bit faster, not by much. Scroll to the bottom, go to the desktop site here. Something a little bit more intense, if I can get it at the same time. Oops, it's not so easy. Okay, a little bit uneven there. We'll try it again in a sec. Okay, so the iPhone 5 is already done there. We'll zoom in very smooth. The text clears up almost instantly, although it does kind of likewise here on the, uh, on the iPhone 4S. We'll click on this image, go to the next page. iPhone 5 finished. iPhone 5 just has incredible web browsing performance. I can't wait to see how it stacks up against the Galaxy S3. Let's see how long it takes this video to load. It's a YouTube video. Another press, maybe? Okay, let's go to another website now. Let's go to The Verge. And here's another example of where the iPhone 5's taller screen is great. You can see a lot more of your favorites. Okay, let's go to The Verge. A little bit faster out of the gate there with the iPhone 5. Okay, let's move down the page. Let's load their desktop site, very image heavy. Okay, they're off at the exact same time. The iPhone 5 won. The iPhone 5 outperforms the iPhone 4S in web browsing. There's no question about it. Kind of move around on the page. Let's just click one more link for good measure. Then we'll jump into a little bit of gaming. Okay, iPhone 5, and it's oddly loading a video. Okay, that's great. Oh, there we go. Kind of far behind there. Let's go back to the home screen. All right, let's do a comparison with gaming. We've got Shadow Gun here. It's a high FPS game, uh, pretty intense. Let's see which launches it first, first of all, and then we'll play it a little bit. Okay, iPhone 5's a little ahead. I don't want to deal with this Game Center stuff. Uh, yes, sign up. And as you can see, Shadow Gun has not been optimized for the higher res display. So we're going to play it just as if it were an iPhone 4S, which I guess is good because it's keeping the playing field a little bit more equal here. So we're going to hit play at the same time. That was exactly the same, and Shadow Gun original game. Keep it easy. All right, iPhone 5 slightly ahead there, but barely. Loading. See if we can tell the difference in graphics. Damn it. That didn't go well. John, are you there? Yeah, I am. Modeled. Much, much, much faster load times here. We're still waiting here on the iPhone 4S. Which means the good doctor is expecting us. Ready? 
Okay, since the iPhone 5 finished first, let's play with that a little bit. So let's try to get in close on some texture. So we can see sort of the ground, and let's look at some light. See if there's really any difference. Very nice graphics. Okay, let's take out the iPhone 4, see if we can notice any difference. Do the same thing, we'll kind of go over here. I'm not too good at this game. You know, it's really how, how difficult to tell the difference here. Um, they both look really good, and I don't even think I'm in the same spot. I'm actually kind of confused. Oh, I want to be over here. There we go. Kind of, kind of bad at this game. So let's see what the sun looks like. Get the same flares. Let's turn around and look how it, look at that fire. Same kind of thing, and we're kind of in the same area here. What is noticeable, though, is that the fire is redder and more orange on the iPhone 5 compared to the iPhone 4S. And finally, we have some app updates here. Let's see which of these devices installs app updates faster. I hate waiting for apps to install. Let's see if there's any difference between the two. Hopefully, they won't ask me for a password. Okay, good. Okay, you can see the progress bar is much further ahead here. It hasn't even begun. There, it's starting on the 4S. And as you can see, it simultaneously started podcasts before Yelp was finished. And that's really interesting about the iPhone 5. It installs multiple apps at a time, whereas the iPhone 4S only does one or two at a time. Uh, so podcast is almost done here, and it's done. Uh, so app installations are so much faster on the iPhone 5, which is a nice little touch. And what about battery life? Well, it's too early to tell. We're going to take this out and use it in the real world. But what we can tell you is that while filming this video, both of these devices have gone down by 6%. They've both gone down the same amount. We've been doing the exact same thing to both of them. So maybe that's an indication that the battery life is about as good. Maybe it's a little bit better. Hopefully it is a little bit better. So hopefully you enjoyed this comparison of the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 4S. The iPhone 5 is definitely faster, generally speaking, installing applications, browsing the web, launching most apps, although in some cases, the iPhone 4S keeps up just fine, which is a testament to how pretty good the iPhone 4S still is. The hardware is, is really night, night and day. You no longer get that annoying glass panel, and it just looks so much more mature and elegant uh, with this metal backing and the thinner design and the polished edges. It's just a really nice package. Anyway, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and thanks for watching. That's it for now.